Uh, well, for the women that were in uh, Hong Kong, they already had the connections with groups. Uh, they already knew other women who were already mobilising and already organising. Uh, and they had ability to be able to connect to these groups. And so it was, it was also about friendship. It was about getting together with women and doing something together as a group. And it was exciting and it was fun. Uh, and it was, it was, you know, it was for for them. It was, it was part of socialising for them. But it was also part of knowing their rights, feeling uh, empowered, and feeling capable. Knowing they could go back to their employers and say, "Oh, look, no, you can't do that. You can't say that because I know the, I know the law. I know the law of this country." So they, they felt very empowered, and they felt like they had a position to stand upon. Uh, Whereas the women who isolated, they were the ones that were in Taiwan. Now, Taiwan has no laws that recognise domestic work. So when they arrive in the country, all they have is the contract, which they have with their agent and with their employer. That's it. That's the only grounds they have to stand upon. Uh, they have no right to a day off, uh, even though the Filipino government is trying to enforce that. They still don't seem to have that day off, even though it's in their contract. Uh, and so for them, it's, uh, they want to mobilise, they do want to know about their rights, they do feel insecure, they feel uh, they don't know what they can and cannot do, can cannot say to their employers what their rights really are, other than what's on their contract. And it seems to them the contract's not being enforced because of course it has no legal authority in that country. Uh, and so they, they are afraid. Uh, they are concerned that if they mobilise, if they organise, they will be deported. Uh, they will be sent home, basically. And they do get sent home. The employer may get frustrated, the employer gets annoyed, the employer says to the agent, I don't want this worker anymore, send them home. And then, of course, they lose money. Uh, they may not have been able to pay off their loan that they had to take out to actually go to that country in the first place. So there's a fear there. Um, so this is something that is tricky for us because of course there is, there is little we can do about that fear except for inform them about their rights and except for try and get them some rights and then try and get them to stand up for their own rights. See in Hong Kong they already have this community and so they are better able to stand up for their rights when the government does try and change something for the worse. Where in, in Taiwan we need to get them to try and stand up and say we have a voice and therefore we need rights and, and pressure the government for those rights. If you get enough women doing that, if you have enough of a community, then it could work, you see. Whereas isolated and independent, it's not going to work. Uh, especially in the case of Taiwan, uh, we, lo we met a lot of women who were already in shelters. Uh, because of the difficulty of getting to women and interviewing women, uh, my field interviewers were very, very good. They managed to find the places where the women were going to shop and going, you know, to, to get phone credit and things. But uh, when I was there, I only really managed to meet the women who were in the shelters because my field reach has only just started and they're only just starting to, to find the places. Uh, so when I was there, I only really met them in the shelters. And of course, at that stage, uh, there's, there's very little you can do except for try and, try and inform them uh, in case they try to to, to migrate again for work. Also, um, so that, you know, trying to talk to them so that when they do go home, they, I make sure that they do try and, you know, communicate to others who are thinking of migrating for work, their rights and, and what it's going to be like and, and, you know, tell them, look, to be honest to them and say, you know, this is what it's really going to be like because otherwise you, you're not going to be helping them. Uh, and so at that point, you know, they're already in the shelters, especially in Taiwan, because there's no laws to protect them as a worker. Um, they have to say that they've been trafficked, um, and in that way they, they are able to be uh, sent home without extra costs involved or without being jailed or without, you know, those sort of things, because they've, you know, run away from their employer. Uh, and so at that stage, you know, there's, there's very little we can do except for inform them for next time and, and try and encourage them to, to form a community at home for those who have been sent back or those who are thinking of going uh, and try and get them at that stage. So we have, we've done some work with groups in Indonesia and the Philippines on this as well. Thank you so much. My final thoughts. Well, I think uh, I wasn't really sure when I went into this project exactly what was going to come out of it. You know, I think it was very much a, a bit of a learning curve to see, you know, how the project was going to develop and uh, and how groups were going to, to interact and, and how the network was going to work together. Uh, but I think for my own project, uh, I found that it it really uh, helped my own work. 
uh, because it, uh, it gave me a lot more connections with the groups in, in uh, both Hong Kong, Taiwan, Indonesia, Philippines. Uh, connections that uh, were very weak before this project and this project gave me a reason to, to deepen those links and, and to find out more about these groups and to get more involved in these groups. Uh, and so I think that was that was definitely a huge success. You know, I feel I feel that I could go back to both countries, either countries, and and uh, you know and, and talk to these women and, and just you know and and it wouldn't it would be uh, it would work really well. Uh, so I think for future projects, it's great to really have those connections now. Um, I also think it helped my work in that uh, allowed me to get a bit deeper, you know, allowed me to do all this, this surveying um, and do more of this research, which of course gave me more knowledge and me more tools to be able to, to uh, understand what's going on. Uh, so I think that was really important. It's actually influenced other work of mine. So I've also published a, a, a different report about debt bondage, which of course has sort of come out a little bit of this project too. So it's feeding into to other work. Uh, and of course being part of this network is really great because I know I have resources, uh, you know, if I have questions or if I, you know, need extra, uh, uh, you know, things to, to read or people I need feedback from, you know, I know I have this group here. So I think even though if I move on from my current position, uh, I will probably keep in touch with the network for that resource. Yeah.